Hey there, Caitlin here, Snap and Nutrition Educator in Waldo County, Maine. Today's video is brought to you in partnership with WIC, Women, Infant, and Children of Waldo County. Today we're doing the WIC Farmer's Market Challenge, number two. So the challenge is to take four mystery ingredients, create one meal, keep it low cost, and obviously it must be healthy. To that I say challenge accepted. So what are the mystery ingredients this week? We're doing spring onions, mm. summer squash, that should be a good one. White radish? Google has determined that it's a beet, but we'll figure that out. And kohlrabi. All of these ingredients come from New Beet Farm, Dickie Hill Farm, and Piecemeal Farms right here in Waldo County, Maine. So for inspiration, for recipes, I was kind of thinking maybe a slaw with the kohlrabi and the radish and lean into some of those Mexican, Central American flavors. So then I thought I could do like an elote type thing with the summer squash. And then obviously it's summer, so let's bring in some of those barbecue vibes. And let's get started. So we're gonna jump right in with the kohlrabi. I was super excited about this ingredient because it is so different. I just twisted the green parts and pulled them off off the top so we were just dealing with the root. It's very similar to like the stalk of broccoli. It has a bit of a thicker outside, um, but it's really tender and bright and fresh on the inside. Then these are radishes. I took a picture to search with the Google image search and it kept telling me beets, but they definitely do not taste like beets. So we'll just play this one by ear, I guess. And then here's my little summer squash. They're so cute, so little. Um, but I think this will be great on the grill and we'll make it like a lote, a Mexican street corn style topping to go with that. So since I wanted to grill these and add some barbecue vibes, I thought let's just add some pork chops to the mix. So I'm gonna make this whole meal with pork chops and the vegetables that I got from the farmer's market. And these are the spring onions, which were my last mystery ingredient. They got a little wilty because I put them in the wrong spot in my fridge and they got a little bit frozen, but we're definitely gonna use this as much as possible. I'm gonna try to get it in every component of this meal. So I just went ahead and well, really just kind of started exploring the kohlrabi. I cut the bottom off and I saw that it was still connected a little bit and it had this peel and I could really almost peel that outside skin off. It's definitely going to be um, a little tough because we're not cooking it so I think I'm just going to go ahead and remove it all. So I just went and used my knife to peel all the outer skin off the kohlrabi root. Then we were left with this really fresh, tender, had a little bit of a bite to it. It's very similar to like a broccoli stem. Um, I went ahead and sliced it into nice uh, thin slices because I'm trying to cut it in a way to make it look like slaw. So first I cut it into discs and then I cut those discs into nice long slices. Another way to call this is to julienne. These pieces were a little big so I made sure that the next ones were cut a little thinner but I gave it a taste. I was really excited about it. I think this is gonna be a great vehicle for our Central American style flavors. Then I went in with the white radish. So I was thinking these were beets. <laughs> and then I cut off a slice and I tasted it. And I was like, it's definitely not a beet. It's not earthy enough. It was more bright and vibrant like a radish, so I'm gonna go ahead and call these white radishes. <laughs> so once I had those nice and slicely, slicely thinned, thinly sliced, I went ahead and cut them into little matchsticks, a nice fine julienne again, um, just to kind of match up with everything else so that we have a nice even consistency in our slaw. Then I, after cutting one of the radishes, I decided that would probably be enough and I would save the other two for another meal or another slaw or something else. Maybe we'll throw them on the grill later. And then I wanted to add a little bit more sweetness to go with the brightness and the vibrance of the kohlrabi and the radish. So I had a honey crisp apple in my fridge and I just cut that up the same way and added it to the slaw. This way we're sticking with the consistency it has a very so apple has a very similar texture to the other ingredients we use but we're adding a bit of sweetness a bit of a familiar flavor and this will also help carry those um, salsa type uh, flavor profiles forward 
So speaking of salsa type flavor profiles, here we're going in with some cilantro. I thought cilantro, jalapeno, what do I add to my fresh made salsa that would make this slaw really bright and really, um, I don't want to say vibrant again, but yeah, really vibrant. Because when we're grilling things, it tends to get a deep, smoky, rich flavor, so we kind of have to balance that out with our sides. So I went ahead and squeezed some lime on top, added some pepper and some salt, and gave that a good stir. Oh, you know me, I'm so bad at picking container sizes. Let me do this off camera. Okay, there we go. <laughs> I'll stir it up much better. And then once everything was kind of coated in the lime juice, the salt and pepper, I just wanted to make sure that everything was gonna have an equal opportunity to absorb flavor. Then I went in with my jalapeno. So I went and de-seeded it, I guess. Um, I just cut the top off, took the sides, sliced it kind of similarly to how I would slice a bell pepper. And then I went and cut them into nice long thin strips again. And I thought that might be a little too big, that might be a bit overpowering, so I cut them into, not cubes, but nice long little rectangle chunks. <laughs> and then I went in with the white part of my green onion. I went from the white to like the, the medium green. I didn't get all the, the dark parts in, I wanted to save those for the top. Um, but I would add onions normally to my salsa, so I thought since these are already an ingredient I'm trying to use, let's use these instead, instead of like a red onion or a sweet onion or something. So a few, are they stalks? Do you call it a stalk of green onion? A few little shoots? I don't know. <laughs> a few green onions sliced and stirred right in there. And there we have it. Oh, breaking up some of the spring onion that didn't quite get cut up. I'm trying to mix it so that every bite would have a little bit of kohlrabi, a little radish, a little apple, I'm trying to make it um, an even texture across. Okay, and now let's go in with our um, elote dressing sauce. I don't know what you want to call it, topping. So usually it's done with just mayo. I'm One, I'm not a mayo fan, and two, that's a little bit heavy for what I was going for. So I went in with some light sour cream and then about a tablespoon of mayo. And then I got this cotija cheese. I had a coupon. Hannaford was um, having all of these different Mexican style cheeses on sale. So this was a really great opportunity to try something new. I do love cotija cheese. It's not new to me, but it's definitely, um, it's definitely a cheese for cheese lovers. It's a little bit funky. It's got a little bit of a feta vibe to it. It breaks up kind of like a feta, but it's a little bit more firm, almost um, a little bit closer to a Parmesan, the way that it's uh, like packed into its little wheel shape. So I went and added some of the broken up cotija to the sour cream and mayo mixture that we made earlier, and then I wanted to have some on top, so I broke up a little bit of extra and put that on a dish on the side, just to make our final product look extra special. So then I stirred the cotija through the sour cream and mayo mixture, just trying to get that well blended so it sticks to our squash in the end, and then some chipotle chili powder, and that's it. Those are the toppings for our elote style squash. There's my grill, grilling up with pork chops. The squash didn't char quite the way that I thought they would, but they still came out really great. There it is with all of its toppings, and we definitely had too much sauce. So definitely cut back that recipe on the sauce, or you're gonna have globs left over like we did. <laughs> my little guy really enjoyed it. He wanted some barbecue sauce for his pork chops, but we really, really enjoyed this meal. So to that, I say mission complete. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you could take a minute to subscribe, it really does help us out. And as always, head to mainsnapad.org for more.